Welcome back to It's Down to Business with Jack Miller. Call us at 305-541-2350. Follow us on Facebook at Jack Miller Down to Business or on Twitter at HJackMiller1. Hello, everyone. Thank you for putting up with my tirade before. This is Jack Miller with my buddy Todd Cohen. And I think we have the one, the only, the Jackie the Joke Man Martling on the phone. Jackie, you with us? I have no time for you today. You have no time for me today. Tell we, me about we it. Have no, hey, we have no. How are you doing, man? <laughs> I, I'm stressed out, but you're going to put me in a good mood because I'm sick of work. Stressed I'm... out from what? You're you're in Florida. You're in South Florida. You're rich. What what the hell could you possibly be stressed out about? I don't know. I got to deal with people all day long. I, I really can't stand people. I don't know. What, I think that's what it comes down to. Well, J- I'm having a rough day too. I haven't had an orgasm in four hours. Well, ho- hopefully by the end of the show you'll have one. Maybe live. Maybe <laughs> live. Speaking <laughs> of Jackie, let me ask you a question. What are you wearing? What am I wearing? I'm wearing uh, leopard uh, bikini bottoms and nothing else because it's very warm here in my garage office. Did I ever tell you I'm into leopard bikini bottoms? No, I'm joking. No. It's, a, <clears throat> it's a beautiful, dreary day here in New York, and uh, we're getting ready for a wonderful New Year's Eve celebration in my house. I'm making swordfish for about 10 people, and, uh, and that's about as exciting as my life gets, but uh, it's pretty good. You don't drink anymore, right, Jackie? Is that true? I quit drinking because it was getting in the way of my pot smoking. Got it. But uh, I think a little known fact, Jackie likes to cook. Is that correct, Jackie? Uh, I'm a pretty good cook. Yeah, I've been a very good cook for a long, long time. You know, well, you know, having big parties, big dinner parties was a good excuse to get very loaded, very stoned, and have a lot of fun. You know, so we've been making, you know, roast beef and steak and big turkey dinners for as long as I can remember. You know, I've always loved that, you know. That's, That's cool. great. Jackie, we got a bunch of questions. Some are serious, some aren't, but you got to do me a you favor. You can ask me anything and I will either deflect them or answer them. or whatever. Now, what the hell kind of show is this? Are you going to tell me how to make money? Yes. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. You know what? The truth is, it's probably cheaper and costs me less time than a psychiatrist. But you know, that's what it is. It just I, some guys golf, and I just Todd and I come here and hang out every week for an hour. That's it. We got to talk. To well, I know that I had a uh, a radio show, a very dirty, uh, dirty joke radio show for eight years on Sirius, and uh, it just was as much fun as you could possibly have. I used to work down there so much. There was a place called the. Uh, New York Comedy Club in Boca. You're coming? And I worked there like three times a year for about 10 years, and then the place went under. But luckily, the place opened back up again. So now that, you, I'm you're coming com- down there, and I'm coming down to the Raz Room. And I love coming to South Florida. It's so much fun down there because there's so many New Yorkers, you know? So I want to talk about You're coming to the Boca Black Box Comedy Club on Glades, March 25th and 26th. And you're yeah, com- that's a long, long way away, but uh, when is it? February 6th, I'm coming to the Raz Room. Now, I that's don't know a- that room. It's a brand new room. February 6th is my beautiful. son's you know the place? <clears throat> It's my son's birthday, February 6th. I'm very excited. I could celebrate with you. I know. And then you're coming in Philadelphia to the Raz Room um, on Chestnut Street, January 20th, correct? Uh, January 30th. Oh, 30th. 30th. You're right. You're right. You're coming to the parks. Love, you know, I was working in Philadelphia for four years before I even heard of whoever Howard Stern was. I was I was in Philadelphia like, are you from there? We are. I we am. both are, we both actually. Are. Because I used to work, uh, you know, at the Comedy Factory Outlet and the Comedy Works and Bananas and the, sure. the Comedy Cabarets, you know, 79, 80, 81, 82. Wow. God, I just a rule the roost there. I just love Philadelphia. I, I did my first CD there at the Funny Bone on South Street. That's awesome. Been there many I, times. I've been there, too. So, so let me ask you a question, Jackie. This is Todd. Um, you famously drew, I don't know if it's so famous, uh, but... You look like, uh, what's his name? John Goodman. Does everybody tell you that? No one has ever told me that, ever. Todd, it's not. A, it's not. I'm not flattering you, Todd. Ah, I didn't think you were. <laughs> but I do love he. John Goodman's in one of my favorite movies of all time, so I love the guy. So you know. Who's Big Lebowski? Yeah, of course. Walter Sobchak. So I mean, you man. know, I happen to be very good friends with the actual dude. You know? Did you know? Yeah, he's based guy? on a real guy. Sure. There's a real guy, the dude. I'm not going to lie. You, you, you remind me of him a little bit. So, Jackie, an actual person. We got, we got a bunch of questions for. I want to talk about a bunch of things. But wait, no, 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 no. Before we do that, before the end of the show, I don't know what it is, but I love uh, fart jokes. I love lesbian jokes. And I love midget jokes. And I love Jew jokes. And diarrhea. So, and you diarrhea, like, yeah, because yeah. I got all kinds of stomach issues. <laughs> so if it sounds you, like you just went through the whole, you just went through my act. Yeah, so if, if any time you want to interrupt me with any of these jokes on each of those so topics. what has two gray legs and two brown legs? 
I don't know what I'm going to be laughing. I don't know. An elephant with diarrhea. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's a good one. That's good. That's good. The sad part okay, is... Why do they bury Jewish guys standing up? I don't know. The money stays so in the their pocket. the chains won't fall out yeah, of the pocket. There, there, you, there, go. there you go. <laughs> there, 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 so, Jack, can we have... Why do midgets giggle when they run through a field? Because the grass tickles their balls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that took care of most of those. All right, go ahead. So, so, you got a lesbian one yet, but you can get that later. No. What do you mean when two lesbians make love? I don't know what. It doesn't mean dick. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about those topics, like a bad potty humor, that potty they always make people fun. laugh? Now everybody gets mad. You're not even supposed to say midget anymore. Pretty soon you won't be able to say lesbian. I don't care. Yeah, what do you think I about what do you think about I've the been a PC? I've been a lesbian, and I didn't enjoy it being either one. What do you think about the PC sterilization of our society? I don't pay any attention. Of any. course I, you I, don't. I tweet a joke every day, and people yell at me, but it's so funny. Because I tweet a feminist joke, and the feminists get mad. Then I tweet a midget joke, and the midgets get mad. But they don't complain about the other ones, you know. Right. So but you... I, if, if you follow me on Twitter, at Jackie Martling, every day at 420 International Marijuana Time, I send out a joke. And they're, sometimes they're funny. Sometimes they're horrible. Sometimes they're clean. And some guy, you know, these people tweet me back and go, Jackie, why do you know those stupid stereotypical jokes? And why do you do those stupid kids jokes? I'm sending a different joke every day for the last four years. Get over yourself. No, Jackie, you know, it's be, getting a little thin. Beside that. You, 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 it's just so much fun. You know, <laughs> every day it's like, you know, when you pick up the, the newspaper and you go to the comics in the back, it's never funny. I, I used agree. to read Nancy. Remember that, that comic? Yeah, Nancy? sure. I don't think it made me smile once. And you right. read it every day. You know, it's just something you do. You, of now, you still have uh, 561-922-WINE, correct? 516-922-WINE is in its 36th year, believe it or not. It's still going. I just changed it earlier this morning. What do you get you, paid you know, for? People come up nothing. to me and say, hey, Jackie, I remember that joke line you had 20 years ago. And I tell them, I'm going. And they can't believe it. And what's great is people have cell phones, so I go ahead and dial it. And people dial 516-922-9463. And all of a sudden, hey, this is Jackie. You know how much I love it when you use your finger? And people are like, wow, it's like a deja vu to like 1981, <laughs> you know. Yeah, Jackie, but I, I just, I've always had it. It's always cost me money. But it helped me. Uh, it, it really helped my comedy career. Rick Dees put me on the map with that joke line. It was great. And you had what? I, I, I heard you on another interview. You had, what, 20 or 30 of those lines going at once at, like, your mother's house? One at, at, the, at the height of 9221, I had 10 answering machines. It, they were all in my mother's attic. And we used to get five or 10,000 calls a day. Rick Dees, a famous disc jockey in L.A., used to give out the number and tell his listeners, that it was Tom Selleck's home phone number. <laughs> That's very funny. So, Jackie... And then Howard Stern, somebody would call Howard, and, and Howard would say, uh, you know, you sound like a really nice guy. Why don't you give me a call at my home office, and we'll hang out, and you give him 516-922-9463. <laughs> Jackie, so people have been calling it forever and ever and ever. You know, it's just fun, you know? You're, you're in your late 60s now, right? No, I'm about 47. And how long have you been smoking grass? You know, it's funny. People <clears throat> people say how old they were when they started smoking pot, but with with my generation, it wasn't how old were you when you started smoking pot. It was more along the lines of where were you in 1967. Right. In 1967, I was a sophomore in college, and that's the first time I smoked pot, the summer of uh, – actually, the summer between freshman and sophomore year of college. Wow. You know, a, people, a couple people started smoking before that, but I was playing in a band, and I was – you know, getting drunk, and I was getting laid, and I was having more fun than any human being could have. And they say, why don't you smoke pot? I say, because I haven't got any more room for any more fun. <laughs> I'm having more fun right now than I can handle. Right. You know, so I started smoking pot, I guess it was uh, how many years ago? That's, That's almost 50 years know. ago. That, but that's not 50 years ago, is it? Almost. Yeah, almost 50. Wow. Yes. So let me ask you a question. If you've been smoking weed for almost 50 years, how the hell do you remember all the jokes that you tell? You're like a machine gun when you go on stage, and... I can barely remember two or three jokes, most of which you know are what? yours. I can't even tell you how scary that is, because I come downstairs in the morning, and I'll take a pill, and I'll turn around, and I'll go, Jesus Christ, did I take my pill? And, and I'm like, I, I, I really, you know, I, that old thing about you walk into a room and forget why you went in there, I can't tell you how badly I suffer from all of that, you know, uh, short-term memory. 
But I never, ever forget my act. I've never gotten lost on stage, and I'm just waiting for the day where I walk up there and draw a blank. But I've just been doing it for so long, I think if I was trying to think about what I was doing, I'd be telling the jokes while I was thinking. Right. That's What's, amazing. You no, know, I just know them. That's the only thing I know, but I know them all. I mean, I know my act. I can do, you know, I can do hours on stage, and I do the same act every night, except I don't have to. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'll be going along on the jokes, but if I want to take a turn and go down some alley and tell a whole bunch of weird, different jokes, I can do it and then just come back in where I left off, you know. Sure. What's it, what's that's what I know. You know, if that's what you do, that's what you know. You know what I mean? You, you yeah. know it well. I can't explain it. I, a lot of people cannot remember jokes at all. and uh, Most people can't remember right. them, and that's good. That's how I can make a living, you know? Sure. You do it good. What's it like being on stage and have, like, the audience go nuts? I'm, I would imagine it's, like, the biggest high there is. Uh, there is. There is nothing. There is nothing that even comes close. But you know what? I, I'll tell you. I'm I'm an organic joke teller. I wasn't a guy that decided to learn some jokes so he could be a comedian. I never had any intention of being a comedian. I was a songwriter and a singer and a rock and roller, and that's where my heart was. But I just happened to start learning jokes when I was a little kid, and every one of them is stuck in my mind forever. And when my last band broke up, I just started telling the jokes on stage. But I'll tell you, like I, I haven't been on stage in a couple weeks. But there's nothing, nothing better in the world. But I just went down to pick up the swordfish for tonight, and there was like seven or eight people there in the fish store, and I just told them this joke. I said, you know, I just sent a joke to Willie Nelson. You guys want to hear it? And they said, hell yeah. So I told them. And, and they all laughed so loud, and I walked out of the fish store, and I'm, I'm not making it up. There's a little lilt in my step. There's a little spring in my step because I just got a laugh. I get just as much of a kick making seven people laugh in the fish stores, I do making a thousand people laugh in a theater. You want to hear the joke? Yeah, yeah. of course. <clears throat> the guy goes, guy goes to the vet with his duck, and he says, Doc, my, my duck will eat. The doctor looks at the duck. He says, well, you know what it is? When a duck gets older, his upper bill grows a little more, and it hangs over the bottom bill, and he can't pick up his food. That's why he can't eat. What you got to do, you got to file down his top bill a little bit. But don't file too much, because if you file it too much, his nostrils are in his upper beak. If you file too much, then his nostrils, when he goes to get a drink of water, his nostrils will suck in the water and he'll drown, so be careful. Then a week later, the doctor, you know, the veterinarian runs into the guy and says, how's your duck? He says, oh, the duck's dead. He says, dead, you jerk. I told you not to file off too much. What, are you going to take a drink of water and drown? The guy says, no, I, I think he was dead when I took him out of the vice. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's good. funny. That's good. So so you mentioned. I said that to Willie Nelson. He wrote back. He said, Jackie, you're a jerk. <laughs> That's funny, man. You you mentioned your uh, your rock and roll roots that you started as a, as a band. Now, the, the Off Hour Rockers, I guess, was your first band, and you famously drove a hearse. With the music equipment well, around, that was and... in my band in college, and then that was my band in the in the seventies here on Long Island. We had a nineteen fifty five Cadillac hearse painted bright yellow. You ever have sex in the back of that? We always had pot and always had booze in it, and we never got stopped. I guess the cops <laughs> just figured they wouldn't dare. You right? Know? Did you ever get laid in the back of that? We, the way it was, we bought it out in Denver. I, I worked construction in Denver for five months. My entire life, that's the only job I had besides show business. And uh, we built a little bit of a platform, and we stole some rugs from the construction sites we're working on. So we had foam with a rug on top of it. So imagine the back of a hearse. It, it might as well be a motel room. And it was just like, you know, they used to say it was our floating whorehouse. You know, it was like, it was just <laughs> incredible. Just incredible. We used to we used to take like twenty people out of the bar on the break, and we'd all be smoking pot in the back of a hearse. Wow! You know the back door opened like a big flap. Sure. You know, of course. And it was uh, it was just incredible. And then we go back out there with women. It was it was pretty surreal to tell you the truth. Now I would imagine you know you're huge. So are people are like women throwing themselves at you all the time? No, no, I'm I'm sixty seven years old. Christ! So you can have eighty year olds throw it. At, what about when you were younger? When you were like on no, you Stern? Know what? It's the same thing. I always tell the same story. If you're a rock and roll star, well, well when I was a rock and roller, I, I it was you know I was not a rock and I played in a band. We weren't any good. You know, I wasn't like Mick Jagger. I mean, I played in a crummy band, and there was three of us, and we played you know 
acoustic guitars. And I mean, we have plenty of women, but once you start in comedy, it's really funny because if, if you're a, a, a bass player, if you're a bass player in a lousy band, girls come up to you and say, here's my hotel room, here's my keys, here's my underwear. If you're a comedian, you work at Carnegie Hall, you get off stage, a pretty girl comes up to you and says, my husband thinks you're very funny. <laughs> 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 So it's, it's, it's a it's, whole different level of women, you know. It's not what They're I'm... not really comedy groupies, but, you know, it's but not, I got a good line, you know. It's, it's, ja- Jackie, I'm not going to lie. Since you uh, friended me on Twitter or whatever it's called or started following me, I have the hottest chicks, like, you know, liking me and becoming followers of mine on Twitter because of things that you have written to me. So I don't fully... Oh, that's bull... That, 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 that's nice of you to say that, but that's not true. <laughs> All right, whatever you say. No, I, I can't. No, imagine. I have no sense, you guys. I don't even. I don't know if you guys are thirty years old or seventy I, years old. I, I, or, I, I, I'm fifty three. My body parts barely work anymore. Todd's much younger, and I think he's he's. Uh, I'm forty two. I'm not his, much. His body younger. parts are working pretty good. Yeah, they work great. So are you like funny, funny when you're romantic, like you know, like. I don't know, a lady takes off her top and her breasts are a little saggy. You're making like saggy breast jokes, or like, or you keep it like pretty clean then. What did I? I I am. You have no idea. I tell the dirtiest, most offensive jokes. Oh, we know. We've been listening not, to your CDs. There's not a bigger gentleman in the world. You know, I'm I'm the most, you know, politically not politically correct. Like I'm goofy, but uh, but there's no, you know, my act does not uh, translate over into my personal life. It's you know? show business. So like you... I, like I don't sit there and take pot shots at women or, or midgets when I'm out in public. You know what I mean? Like I'm a, you know. It's I'm business. A, it, it freaks people out. They can't even believe I'm the same guy. I love when people find out they become my friend, and then they find out who I am, and they're like, they can't do the math to make me into that guy that they know. You know. So you're a single guy. I know there's a lot of women who are who want you. What's your type in a woman? A woman. What are you looking for? I I I like everybody. You know, I have never had a type. Never. You know what I mean? I I mean, I, I like somebody who who's quick to quick to laugh that's a, you know has a good sense of humor and uh it, 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 there's there's nothing that turns me off just nothing so you know what i mean it's like you're interested like, in you know, the person wow look at that redhead or wow look at that blonde or you know look at that skinny you know i just like women you know i really do it, it makes it a lot easier to get them if you don't care what they look like <laughs> <laughs> there you go no I, I like you know smart women smart people like jokes more than people that aren't smart Stupid people say, "Oh, that's stupid." Smart people love jokes because they're like little, they're little uh, puzzles, you know. Right. You know. Noam Chomsky, the famous, you know, the famous, uh, the smartest man in the world. Noam Chomsky is a big fan of dirty jokes. Albert Einstein's a fan of dirty jokes. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Anybody that's very smart loves dirty jokes. You know, Paul McCart. I finally got to tell Paul McCartney a joke the other day. You know, it's it's great fun. You know, it's it's a it's a whole it's a whole lot. Uh, Little genre, you know. Who, who's the funniest person you ever met that we wouldn't think would be the funniest person you ever met? You know what I mean? Like someone that who's you not a com- think? yeah, someone who's not a comedian that you've met along the road that that really blew you away with being funny. You know, that's a very good question. I don't even know the answer to that. I d- I would have to really think about that. Um, well, you can get back to us. You can take the rest of the show. No, that, no, that, you know what? Nobody's ever asked me that. Like Rodney, Rodney was very, very funny. Rodney Dangerfield was very funny, but he was funny without trying to be funny because of the way he carried himself. But he wasn't really a witty person. It's hard to, you know, it's a weird package. Right. Comedians come in weird packages. You know what I mean? Jackie. Like uh, a lot of people you really expect to be funny aren't so funny. But uh, you know who's really funny is Leslie West is is a guitar player, but but he's a very funny right. guy. But but maybe you'd expect a musician to be funny. You know, as far as just uh, that's oh that oh I love that well, I love you, that you, question. Jack, I got to think about think that. about it. We got to take we got to take a three minute break. When we get back, I actually want to talk about Dangerfield. I heard you tell a great story about you and him walking down the Vegas Strip. Uh, oh, yeah, that's, my, that's yep. one of the great stories of all time. Give it three, four minutes. We'll be back, everyone, with the one and only Jackie the Joke Man Martling. Yeah, baby. Don't turn that dial. We'll be right back. Turn it around. Do you need long-term real estate financing? 
Gelt Financial is located right here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida and provides 30-year terms with no balloon payment whatsoever on non-owner occupied residential and commercial real estate. With a minimum loan amount of only $75,000 all the way up to $5 million, we provide common sense underwriting and a quick closings. We don't require tax returns whatsoever. Call right now at 561-221-0900. Again, that's 561-221-0900. Did you invest in a non-liquid real estate partnership? Do you want and need liquidity? There's finally an answer. Quick Liquidity is a direct buyer of real estate minority interest and tenants in common investments across the country. To find out if we would buy your non-liquid investment, call us at 561-221-0881 or visit us at quickliquidity.com. That's quickliquidity.com. Landed on 880 The Biz, South Florida's only business talk station. 880 The Biz, where money talks. Welcome back to It's Down to Business with Jack Miller. Call us at 305 541 2350. Follow us on Facebook at Jack Miller Down to Business or on Twitter at HJackMiller1. Hello, everyone. This is Jack Miller back with our main man, Todd Cohen, and our special guest, Jackie the Joke Man Martling. Um, Jackie, I want to talk about, before we get into Rodney Dangerfield, could you give out your Twitter account again and tell everyone where your upcoming shows are at? Because I know people... Well, gonna... my Twitter account is at Jackie Martling, J-A-C-K-I-E-M-A-R-T-L-I-N-G. I can't tell you what I had to go through to get my own name verified. Somebody had that name and had it verified. So, you know, I'm very proud to announce that it's my own name. It's at Jackie Martling every day at 4.20 p.m. I tweet a very rude joke of any kind. You never know what's going to be. I'm going to be at the Raz Room in Coral Springs on uh, January 30th. I don't know where Coral Springs is, but it's South Florida somewhere. And uh, I'm with Michelle Balin, who's a no. very, very funny girl. It's going to be a great double bill. We're going to have a... A wild time and a big, you know, meet and greet afterwards, and they take pictures and you know, act like idiots. <clears throat> and then, uh, uh, Jackie, what do you call it? January, uh, January, th- that's February 6th. Yeah. February 6th. And January 30th, I'm going to be at the Raz Room that's in the Prince Theater in Philadelphia. I know some of your listeners are there. And then March uh, 25th and 26th, I think it is, I'm at the Boca Black Box that used to be in the New York Comedy Club. And I've been there in a couple of years. I can't wait. You know, I used to go down there to the New York Comedy Club. It's on Glades Road in Boca Raton. And there was an 85-year-old woman that weighed about 60 pounds named Audrey. And every Saturday night, she would show up, and I'd play Stump the Joke Man and bring women on stage to tell jokes. And this little old lady would get up on stage and tell jokes that were so disgustingly dirty, (laughs) the crowd used to go berserk. She can't possibly still be still alive, but Audrey, if you're out there... I'm coming down. She, oh, she was just a hoot. I'm talking frail. I'm, I'm, Jack, I'm telling you, she was about four feet tall and weighed about 60 pounds, and she, oh, God, it was so funny. Hey, if she so co- at any rate, that's, that's the shooting match. If she cooks uh, and does laundry, February she may be my type. Coral Gables and March 25th and 26th in uh, Boca. Why don't, you get, why don't you give some upcoming New York dates, too? We have some listeners yeah, up there. Yeah, you're going to be in Ben Salem at the Parks Casino, too, right? <clears throat> Parks Casino is January 20th. That's the Wednesday the 20th. And anybody on Long Island, uh, I'm working at McGuire's in Bohemia out on Long Island. It's a little club, and it's, I think it might even be sold out by now, but that's the greatest place to come see me. It's all called McGuire's. It's in uh, Bohemia, Long Island. All this information is on jokeland.com. The phone numbers and the websites and everything like that. Everyone well, go- that's a little club out, out east on Long Island that, you know, there's nothing like a Long Island audience for me. I just really kick ass, you know. Okay, so let me throw some names at you. Tell me what you think. Rodney Dangerfield. Just so funny. So, so funny. I heard just he... unbelievable. Is it true he was your inspiration? <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I never had any in- intention of being a comedian, but there was nothing like when Rodney used to come on uh, The Tonight Show in the 70s. It was such an event. Seven minutes of stand-up and then seven minutes sitting down. And we'd talk about it for weeks because every joke was so hysterical. And then uh, I, 
a friend of mine told me this joke that was unbelievable, and I sent Rodney a bunch of jokes. It's a long story. It's going to be in my book. But a friend of mine told a lie that he had met Rodney, and then it turned out he hadn't. But I mailed the jokes to Rodney. You know, I mailed jokes to Rodney just like I mailed my albums to Howard Stern. My whole life has been just very hit and miss, you know. And Rodney called me up, and I wound up going on the road with him. And it was just so much fun. And he always said that I gave him the best joke he ever had. Do you Didn't... know the joke I gave him? No, go ahead. <clears throat> the, the joke I gave him was, yes, yeah, she was an ugly girl. You know, she was known as a two-bagger. That's a girl <laughs> so ugly, she not only got to put a bag over her head, you got to put a bag over your own head in case her I bag I remember ripped. that joke. <laughs> That's one of the best. That's, That's a great he one. Up, he always said, here, you give me the best joke I ever had. You know, i got to love you. You give me the best joke I ever had. You know you, you know what's interesting? I don't think a lot of people know about you. It seems to me that you're an entrepreneur. And when you've gotten, like, on Rick Dees and with Dangerfield and with Stern, you've gone out of your way to get these things. It's like you've worked for them. You know, them. It's, it's, it's been luck. But luck favors the prepared. I sent out uh, 400 sets. Me and my Nancy Seriani, who wound up being my wife, we sent out 400 sets of all three comedy albums, three cassettes that you know of the albums, and all our promo. We sent them to like 400 people, and one of the people we sent them to was Howard Stern. These guys in Washington D.C. told me, "Hey, this guy just got fired down here, and he's going to New York City. You should look him up." And I blindly mailed my albums to Howard Stern, and he called up and said, wow, these albums are great. Why don't you come in and hang out on the air? And I went in and hung out on the air for a day, and at the end of the day, they said, you're fun. Why don't you come back next week? So you, you made and I your... worked there one day a week for free for three years. So you made your... worked my way in worked my way in to where I was writing for him, and then we went to the mornings and went to the then went to Pluto. Right. You, know? you made your own luck. That's kind of my point. You didn't sit back on your backside waiting for it to happen. You went out and hustled. No, you know, I was a musician in the 70s, and I got a job working in a recording studio and learned how to make albums. I made my own comedy album. I made my first three comedy albums. You know, they used to make fun of me for making my own albums. But in 1979, I was standing there at the door when people were leaving, selling my albums, and all the guys would be making fun of me. And then all of a sudden they go, wait a minute. We each made $40. Martling made $40. But he made an extra $75 because he sold 15 albums for $5 a piece. And all of a sudden I didn't look so stupid. And nowadays, you can't walk out of a club without somebody selling you something. But in those days, I was the only guy doing it. I had my own comedy LP six months after I went into comedy. You know, yeah, I've been hustling. I've been hustling for a long time, man. I got you. Okay, and let me throw another name. Gilbert Gottfried. I'm doing Gilbert's podcast on... uh, Jeez, I I love Gilbert. You know, I've known him for a long time. I I, I do. We uh, all do. I, no one makes me laugh like Gilbert. Gilbert yeah, uh, he he's is, great. He's a different kind of, of cat. I mean, definitely. He, he is so great. He's always been so great. When I came on the Stern Show, if I wrote a line and gave it to him, if Gilbert did one of my jokes, that would just make me feel like a million dollars, you know? He's great. Can you do a podcast can... on the 19th. About three or four weeks ago, me and Gilbert and Artie Lang and Mario Cantone and Orlando Jones did the 100th uh, episode of Gotham Comedy Live, which is a live television show on Access TV. Mark Cuban, you know who that is? Sure. Mark Cuban, who owns the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah, that guy is own. He has his own uh, television station. And we did a show, and it was it was ridiculous. The show was it was so great. It was uh, me, Gilbert, Artie, Orlando, and Mario Canton. I mean, that's five funny guys, and we just kicked ass, you right. know. I'm sure and, it's... Uh, Gilbert, I mean, Gilbert's just funny, 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 always. And I always make him laugh. You know, when I see him and we exchange jokes, you know, making him laugh really hard is, is always feels really good, you know? It, what... it just does. Making making the good comics laugh really hard is, is always a, a, a plus, you know? You, you were in one of my favorite documentaries with him, The, the Aristocrats, right? Yeah, you know, I have such a st- I, c- I could write a book just about that stupid joke. Uh, I was pen pals. I- did you see the movie? I did, of course. Do you remember at-, at some point in the movie they showed you a book? Yeah. Called The Rationale of the Dirty Joke by Gershon Legman. I was pen pals with that author. Oh, my God. He was a j- dirty joke collector that lived in-, in France. And me and him were pen pals 20 years before that movie came out. And that was my favorite joke. Twenty years, 
before the aristocrats. And when it came time to make that movie, Penn Jillette and Paul Provenza came to me and said, Martling, we have to put you in the movie because we did a search on the web of the aristocrats and we only got two hits on that joke. And they were both my website. Wow. That's because funny. it was Gershon Legman's version of the joke and my version of the joke. And it's, uh, it's a whole long story. But, that, you know, that was such a fun, fun thing. You know, that, that, sure. that was just a great... I was sitting... I was at a screening sitting next to Joe Franklin the first time he saw the movie. And Sarah Silverman was saying, yeah, I was in joke... Franklin's office, and he sat with me, and all of a sudden she looks out the, from, at the audience and says, he raped me. <laughs> <laughs> That's and funny. Joe Franklin freaked she was... out. Everybody's like, no, no, Joe, it's good for your career. No, it's just a joke. Everything's fine. Oh, it was, it was just right. hysterical. God, she God was... rest his soul, he's dead. But he was a, he was a wonderful, wonderful character. Man. Right. She Speak... was she was great in that. Speaking of dead. Oh, that was such a, such a great movie. Such a great. It was such an honor to be part of that grand, gang, you know? Let yeah. Th- let me throw another name at you. Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers was one of the first people that got the Stern Show. David Brenner got it. Joan Rivers got it. You know, the whole knowing that he's kidding and it's just a goof. And she, because she is, she is just so, she was just so wild. You know, I mean, she was no holds barred and she knew how to laugh at everything. You know what she said the day after 9 11? What? The day after 9-11, she called a girlfriend and said, Hey, you want to go eat at Windows on the Ground? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, that's, you know. No, she just, she's, she's that. She so, was just delightful. She it, used to bring jewelry into the studio for, you know, for me and Gary and Fred to give our wives. I mean, she was just funny, funny, funny. Can't say enough good about her. Is she the funniest woman of all time? And and if so, uh, who's the funniest woman comedian out there now in your opinion? I, I, I don't think... I don't think there was anybody in her league. You know, she was funny like Rodney was funny. I mean, she was rapid fire and crazy, and she could tell ten jokes, and it wouldn't even matter if five of them weren't any good, but they they were always good. Gotcha. I I mean, and, you know, it's not sexist, but, you know, when you're a comedian, you know, I'm not an especially high echelon comedian at all, but it doesn't matter. I, I don't laugh at comedians you know i look at comedians nowadays and i you know i i don't i'm i'm too old i don't get it you know i just like a good filthy joke and after that i'm kind of lost but uh but she was just funny funny you 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 laugh at your act though when you do it is that is that just something that you do be out of habit or do you still think all these jokes i've been laughing at my own jokes for so long a couple of my (laughs) A couple of my claims to fame is I was thrown out of the of the high school lunchroom for laughing too loud. Do you know how loud a high school lunchroom, lunchroom is? is? Yeah. <laughs> I got thrown out, and I got thrown out of the bowling alley bar. Wow. Imagine how loud a bowling alley bar is. So those are my two claims to fame. You know, I used to work at a country club, and I used to tell jokes to this deadpan guy, and I think I just started laughing at my own jokes, uh, talking to him. And, you know, I just... Number one, I think they're funny. Very often I'm thinking about who told me the joke when they told me it for the first time. And, you know, I tell people it's it's harder for me to not laugh than it is for me to laugh. It's just you're laughing it's so is, ingrained. I mean, I'm contagious. really... No, your laughing is contagious, I'm really, though. You know, I'm enjoying the joke. I'm enjoying making people laugh. And I'm enjoying their laughter. It's just a whole... It's a whole package, you know. And you know, people could sit there and scratch their heads and try and dissect it, or else they can just... Relax and enjoy it. You know what I mean? That's the way I do it. You know what I'm saying? Just have fun with it. So I got to ask yeah. you the last one, and only because everyone asked. How's your relationship with Stern today? <clears throat> well, we don't really have one, you know? I, I mean, I don't speak to him. I haven't spoken to him in a long time. You know, uh, I've been off. The, uh, my show was canceled a year ago, November. And so it's been a couple of years since I've been to the to the. Uh, Christmas party for Sirius XM. You know, I'm I'm sure if I ran into him, I mean, there's no animosity or anything. I just, you know, it's just a non a non thing. Cordial. Although I went to lunch with Robin about uh, two or three weeks ago. Got it. How about Artie? What's your relationship like with him? He, you know, it's funny because me and Artie are very good friends, and I just did his podcast like uh, two or three weeks ago. And people said, "Oh, it's great to see you and Artie getting along." And I'm like, "What are you talking about? We have always been friends." He didn't come on the Stern Show until eight months after I was long gone. 
we've always had a great relationship. I did his direct TV show three times, and people loved it because it's the conversation they always wanted to hear, you know. Now, I, but me and him got along so well, and you know, he he gave me the finest compliment. I I, I still think about it. I got, I came off stage. Um, I was on second when we did that Gotham comedy show, and uh, one of my jokes is two flies land on a piece of you know crap, crap you know. Mm-hmm. And I came over and sat down, and he turned to me. He said, "You know what? When you go on stage and say two flies land on a piece of crap, it's like watching Babe Ruth hit it out of the park." Wow. And I'm like, holy Christ, Artie, that's about the nicest compliment anybody's ever given me. You know, we're a mutual admiration of society. He's a very, very funny guy and a very, very nice guy. I mean, him have always gotten along. And he used to come to see me. You know, him and his gang used to come in like 1989 and 90 when I did the Rascals Comedy Hour. He's a lot younger than me. And him and his whole gang used to come and watch me. You know, destroy the place at Rascals, which you know that that was a great which is nice. That you know. was that was a great podcast. I actually listened to it over the weekend, and one of the things you, I, you heard it, yeah, so, I, I know, did. Just, it was it was great, but I didn't realize, and I'm going to ask you to tell the story that because I'm a huge Stern fan, that you used to pass Stern kind of lines or jokes during the shows, and sometimes he would use them, and sometimes he didn't. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about that? Oh, I mean, I was you know. I don't think oh, most the people know that. I was working for free. I was slowly but surely passing him an idea here and there. And then when he got fired, he got rehired over at K-Rock, and I was on one day a week. And then he called me up and said, listen, we're going to mornings. I want you to be on two days a week and do your thing with the notes. And then within a couple of months, I was there five days a week because he was much funnier the days I was there. I mean, he's an incredibly talented, funny, brilliant guy. But... Imagine that with one more mind working and, and slipping him punchlines. So it's like basically like he's driving the car and I'm reading the map. So he, you know, and I feed him punchlines. I mean, it's funny. I got every punchline I ever gave him that he said is in my mother's attic. I mean, I have stacks and stacks, you know, of the days. And uh, I mean, I, a lot of, a real lot of jokes, a real lot of funny, funny. And then there were never with jokes. It's funny because my act is old jokes. Right. No, not even new. My act is, you know, two Jews going to a bar from 1930. But I never handed him a joke. Everything I handed him was a line or an idea or a way to go or, you know, just a spur of the moment thing. It's like if you're talking to Todd and I'm in on the conversation, only instead of saying what I think is funny, I write it down. And you get to say that too. So you, you know, you got a little extra leg up. Right. You know? I mean, he was brilliant and that extra. The analogy I make is if you're a world-class sprinter, you're still going to be a little faster with a little wind in your back. You know That's what I right. mean? Sure. And uh, and it was such a weird thing because he, he worked it in so seamlessly. I mean, you have to be as brilliant as Howard to be able to – he'd look at it, and he'd not only work it in, but sometimes he'd twist it around. If it was something rude about Fred, he could make it about me. If I made it about him, he could make it about Gary. It, it was – it was really great. It, Who, it was it was seamless. Fifteen years, you know. The last day I was there was as much fun as the first day. I mean, we just just kicked ass, and, and he went to the moon. We went right. to the moon. You, you did. Know? Who Who are you closest with from that cast of characters today? Uh, probably John. You know, I went to lunch with Fred about a year ago. Uh, I emailed Gary once in a while when we need to communicate about something, but. Uh, I mean, I went to lunch with Robin, and then I went over her apartment the other day. But uh, we're not. Close, close. Like Stutter and John and me and Bobby Slayton did a show at uh, the South Point Casino last Super Bowl, and I saw John. Uh, it was funny. About a week ago, me and Stutter and John and Steve Grillo and uh, Reverend Bob Levy and Casey Armstrong, we all went in Anthony Camus' uh, podcast. It was great fun. Just oh, a wow. riot, you know. What's John doing these days? You know, he's doing some stand up, and uh, he's executive producer of. Uh, Oh, uh, what's her name? Stephanie Miller's podcast. Stephanie Miller is the daughter of uh, William Miller, who was uh, ran for vice president with Barry Goldwater uh, ten thousand years ago. You know, gotcha. Wow. She's brilliant. She's a brilliant uh, political, you know, comedian, wit, storyteller, and uh, she has a podcast out in Los Angeles. So I got to go. I got to go out there and do Stephanie Miller's podcast. And Jay Moore's podcast, and uh, got it. Those hey. are fun, man. You get so much exposure. I can't wait to do Gilbert's. You know, 
I hear you. Ja- um, Jackie, I wanted to I wanted to follow up. I asked you a question about a half an hour ago and and you never really answered it. You said it was a good question though. Um who who is the funniest person you ever met that that isn't supposed to be funny or you wouldn't think would be funny? Naked or You know what? I, I was thinking about that and I still don't know. I'll tell you every single person in my family is funnier than me. I'm a very funny guy, but I, my family they they're so smart. And so, so funny. Um, but people that you run into, you know, it, it's very odd. I, 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 I've been thinking about it ever since you said it, and I don't have an answer for that. Well, well know, I really don't. Todd, you know what? We're going to be at the Boca Black Box. You can ask him then. I'll ask you again. Jackie, we only have a few minutes left. I have one final question, and I want you to tell him where everyone you're going to be again. It seems to me that... Most comedians or the good ones are really sharp, really smart, brilliant, sensitive, but yet a lot of them seem to be depressed and have, you know, just issues. And I wonder. Well, let me tell you, uh, it was funny because after, a few months after I was a comedian, it was like we had a group of seven guys that we very pompously, we called ourselves the Magnificent Seven. And it was really funny because we we're all white guys, there was no Jews. There was no blacks, no Puerto Ricans, and just by coincidence, it was seven white guys, and we called ourselves the Magnificent Seven. I don't know if you would, you probably know Bob Nelson, yeah, and uh, Rob Bartlett, but uh, and Richie Minavini. But it was, it was there was seven of us, and um, yeah, after a couple months, Rob Bartlett turned to me and said, "You know what? I just realized that we're all really smart and all really sensitive." Because I think the people think, oh, comedians are dumb, you know, and, and th- comedians are, are, are boisterous and, and, and mean, or, you know, and all of a sudden he realized, and then you realize to a man, to a woman, every single comedian is ridiculously sensitive because right. that's where it comes from, and you've got to be.